from the bowling capital of the world, America's number one bowling show. Championship Bowling. From the Firestone Bowlerama, it's the World Series of Championship Bowling here in Akron, Ohio. Hello, everybody. I'm Fred Wolf, and we start the World Series with the two high scorers over our matches of the past weeks. It should be an interesting one, a prize list of some $17,500 added here in the World Series. Here's the top scorer in his two matches. He won both of them, shot a total of 1401. That's an average of 203 from St. Louis, the Tiger, Harry Smith. Thank you, Fred. Well, we throw all past scores out the window, and you have one job to do this week, to beat a young fellow from your hometown. You know his name? I know Nellie. He's quite a bowler and quite a nice fella. Nice fella. Nelson Burton, Jr. Right. Nice fella. But when you start bowling, you're going to be worrying about... Uh, what are you going to be worrying well, about? Well, any time you bowl three games for 5,000, uh, you've got to get keyed up and worry about the pins, not who you're going to bowl. First prize is 10,000 there. Are you well, figuring on finishing second? Well, I got to get the second first. That's right. Let's bring him out here. The youngster who shot 1329, average 221, Nelson Burton Jr. <laughs> well, I believe we asked you last week. You've met Harry before along the PBA tour, and now, of course, the chips are on the table. The difference between 10,000 and 1,000. Well, that's Actually, a lot of money. <laughs> first or fourth. Well, hope we can hit him good. Harry's been bowling good, and uh, I like the lanes pretty well here. We well, look for good scores, I think. That's a good sign. Both boys say they are sharp and ready. Gentlemen, good luck, a little handshake, and good luck, good luck to Bowling both right of there. you here this week on Championship ready. Bowling. <laughs> Working with us, as usual, Mr. Bill Bonetta. Bill, I know you have a word here about these two fellas. As usual, yes. I'd like to talk about the two individuals again. Uh, Harry Tiger Smith, his nickname describes him perfectly. He's quite a tiger with the ball. Of course, uh, Nelson Burton, Jr., is uh, quite a young, lion-hearted bowler. And uh, I'm going to put this affectionately. They're both animals with that bowling ball. No matter how you look at it, it should be uh, proved to be an interesting match. I guess we'd have to say they're both hungry. They certainly are, and that ball speaks for them. Well, we got a lot of food for them. we got a lot of money out there. Let's see how they split it up. We'll be ready, Bill, if you get ready. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to start the World Series of Championship Bowling, the first game coming up right after an interesting word. The first game, Nelson Burton, Jr. from St. Louis, Harry Smith from St. Louis, the two top scorers over the past 21 weeks. Burton won the toss, elected to start on the left, rolls it in, looks good and he carries in the first frame. Nelson Burton averaging 221 for his six games, Smith averaging 233. Harry shot 690 his first match, defeating former national all-star champion Bob Strimpey. Then he defeated Don Carter in a thrilling match, 711 to 675. Burton defeated Ray Bluth with 694. Then he defeated Jack Piondolillo with 635. Starting from scratch, the winner moves on to the final. Smith with a strike. Looks like a big start, Bill. A couple of bulldozers there. Boy. I tell you, they're not sparring. They're gonna come out to fight. These two boys have uh, explosive type balls and personalities. Uh, Harry uh, shows it more, but uh, young Nelson Burton Jr., uh, although relatively quiet, certainly has a lot of moxie. You know, a very interesting situation, Bill, in that Burton won the toss and elected to start on 23, the left side, where he had so much success. Ten pin is still there. Remember in his first match, when he shot 694, he set some kind of a record. When he left a 10 pin in the first frame on the left side, lane 23, and then followed on that lane, 
with 16 consecutive strikes going all the way in the match. Ten pin covered by Smith. You hear that thumb uh, pop out of the ball. And speaking of thumbs in thumb holes, Bill, I believe you have something to comment here on this young fella pertaining to his thumb hole. Yes, he has a thumb that uh, looks like a raw meat, and he has to actually squeeze or pressure his thumb into the thumb hole. But he says it gives him a secure grip, easy release. Just his individual Solid. way of holding the ball. How about that hit for the double? Well, the boys like to get out of the shoot, and uh, neither one of them did. Harry just reminded us that he's not from St. Louis anymore. That's right, he would not be. He used to be. Went from St. Louis to Baltimore, Baltimore to Boston, now from Redwood City, California, near San Francisco. Correct that. <laughs> Harry Smith from Redwood City, California. Nelson Burton from St. Louis, where, of course, Harry became a national figure in this 10-pin sport. Harry born here in this area, just outside of Cleveland. So he's been around the country with that bowling ball of his. Burton, up, and the seven pin. What most of the other bowlers admire about this young fellow is that uh, he doesn't baby the ball. He goes out to uh, get strikes, and he does it with uh, all the authority that uh, any bowler could possibly possess. The cover. Burton now. 39 spare in the third. It's Harry Smith now in the third frame. Every ball has been in the pocket. Strike in the third now moves left. He has the advantage now of the strike in the third over Burton's spare. All of our boys in the World Series wearing the King Louis All-Star Bowling Shirt. Doesn't seem possible, but the seven pin remained untouched and uh, Harry unable to get his double. So that's the third strike. We're still looking for the first double, and either man could be all the way. There's the cover. So for Smith, it's 20, 40, 60. As Nelson Burton, Jr. Son of the great Nelson Burton, member of the American Bowling Congress Hall of Fame. He started bowling, actually, as a student. Attended St. Louis University. Oh, that one seemed to stay with him a little too long. Almost getting across to the Brooklyn. That's one of the few balls that uh, I've seen Nelly have that far from the pocket. The ball hung on his thumb, and uh, his fingers uh, pulled the ball over to the Brooklyn or Jersey side. Ten pin is covered as the youngster from St. Louis moves left. These two boys uh, compiled some very fine figures in their first two appearances, uh, Bill, in that Smith had three open frames. He had the six, seven, 10 twice in his first match. Burton has had only two open frames, both on the right side, both in his first match. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in his first out, when he shot 694, he went into the 10th frame on the right side and left the 6, 9, 7, 10. We're in the fifth of the first game. Harry Smith taking a re-rack. Harry, 20, 40, 60. He's had two strikes on this side. Solid 10. Well, I could have given given uh, Harry the start that he wanted. Uh, he could very easily have had a turkey or perhaps even five in a row there. 
you said, Fred, statistically, this man's a good spare shooter. People say the way he wanders on the lane, how can he make spares? But he does. Dropped it. Oh! Well, it's a good thing that lane wasn't one inch <laughs> longer. We're at the end of five. In the first game, Harry Smith, 79, and a doubtful spare in the fifth. Burton is 78, but he has a strike in the fifth. We're in the sixth frame of the first game. And you're mentioning that uh, Harry very seldom misses a spare, almost backfired there. Almost put the heat on him there. <laughs> Go. There it is. Well, that's six in a row that the Tiger has hammered in that 1-3 pocket. Burton has been out of the pocket once. And here is Nellie's second opportunity for the double. Neither man unable to double in the first five frames. Almost another Brooklyn leaving the six pin. Now here we have the interesting uh, situation. Bill and I go back that in his early appearance, one of his early appearances, when he had 16 strikes in a row on the left side, winning the toss here this week, the start of the World Series, he had his choice. And he picked the right side to finish on. Well, there must be... Uh, he must have changed his mind somewhere along the line. I'd certainly be interested in uh, learning his strategy there, if it is strategy. He must have a sound reason for doing it. Burton now moves left. And you watch him jam his thumb in that thumb hole. He actually has to pressure his hand to get the thumb in the hole. You'd wonder how he got his thumb out. There's another seven pin. That's three of them over there. That was uh, quite similar to uh, Harry Smith's leave earlier in lane 23, where a couple of pins uh, looked like they might uh, hit the seven, but uh, none of them did. There's the cover for Burton. Burton is 117 with a spare in the seven. It's the World Series of Championship Bowling. Here's Harry Smith in slow motion. doesn't get there. And we have the 2-4-5. Looks like doubles are hard to come by, Bill. Well, they certainly are. But uh, I expected the boys to break loose a little earlier. But they're, they're still uh, getting the zone clearly in their minds so they can roll the ball freely. 2-4-5, not an easy spare. Harry Smith certainly made it look easy. He followed the uh, spare indicator, the ball path indicator on the spare maker, and made it look extremely easy. At the end of seven, first game of three, the loser here, the losing total, and the losing total of next week's match will decide third and fourth. So actually, the winner this week is guaranteed at least $5,000, which is second prize money in the finals. The two winners over the next two weeks qualify for the final six games over the final two weeks. And Smith is short of that pocket again, and he has the 2-5 again, and this match is even to the pin. Harry Smith has that uh, interesting uh, wiggle, which uh, could be compared to the waggle, really, in uh, golf. Nice cover. So the boys are losing, actually, very few pins in count. Smith now 137 spare. Burton comes up in the eighth. He's 117 with a spare in the seventh. And Nelly could take the lead with two strikes here on his two-frame appearance. There's one. So Burton now moving left. This is his fourth opportunity for the double. His third opportunity for the double. Smith has missed on his first three. So let's see if Burton can pick up the first double of the match. There it is. And here we go. Well, that breaks the ice. 
So Nellie Burton has taken the lead in the ninth frame of the first game. A lot of room for a lot to happen on the World Series of Championship Bowling. Harry Smith, Nelson Burton Jr. Next week, Dick Weber and Billy Hardwick. The two winners meeting in the finals and Smith is short again and another 2-5, that's three in a row. Well, it's hard to tell whether uh, Harry is keeping the ball deliberately uh, to the right or if his timing happens to be just a little bit off. Good cover. At the end of nine, Burton is 137. He is on the double in the eighth and ninth. You know that bowling can be enjoyed any time of the day, morning, afternoon, evening. And incidentally, if any of you folks, ladies, men work odd hours or say on Saturdays and Sundays with a day off maybe during the week, why don't you take advantage of the slow midweek daytime period? Check with your bowling proprietor. Get in an afternoon league and throw strikes like Harry Smith and Nelson Burton Jr. It's great fun. Makes you feel like you'd like to. Well, Especially when you strike, as Harry Smith did right there. Harry needs another strike for 200. He's only had one game really under 200. Actually, one game under 223. So he'll be looking for a double here. And that's his fourth chance for the double, and he still does not have a double. Four times. Smith, unable to get the second strike. He's had a lot of balls in that pocket. He has left three ten pins and one seven pin, and he left the two five three times, once with four. There's the cover. He almost missed the ten pin. Harry picked up $650 in bonus money in his first match, $550 in his second match. Nelson Burton in the 10th, and Nellie has a chance for bonus money with three strikes in the 10th frame, and that'll give him a nice margin to go into the second game. Looks high. Too high, nothing but the six pin. Ooh, that was a getaway ball. Could have been anything. Could have been trouble for him, six, seven, perhaps. Nellie's been high third time now in that lane, and yet he uh, elected to finish on 24. That's the cover, the count for Burton, 206. He'll have a lead of 11 pins with the full count which, of course, doesn't mean too much. In Harry Smith's match against Don Carter some weeks ago, Carter opened with 279. Smith had 223, and he caught him, closing with 254 and 234. There's the count for 206. For Nellie Burton, 195 for Harry Smith. The margin is 11 pins. Burton is out in front. We're waiting for the second game of three on the World Series of Championship Bowling. Fred Wolf, along with Bill Bonetta, here in Akron, Ohio, the home of Firestone. The start of the second game, it's Harry Smith from Redwood City, California, trailing by 11 pins. Leaves another 10 on a pretty good hit. Harry shaking his head. And blown off a little steam there. Uh, that was one of the uh, most devastating hits he's had yet. And still only got nine pins. That's his fourth 10 pin. Burton has had one. And the cover. So the youngster from St. Louis now moving in on the right side has a nickname. His daddy calls him Bo, as most of his close friends do. Born in St. Louis in 1943. Has two sisters 
and he has a brother that averages in the 190s and his daddy can still hit that 200 mark there it is that's the easy roller it's pretty hard to get used to uh, Harry being from anywhere but St. Louis for some reason he has St. Louis written all over him we introduced him at the opening of the show from St. Louis. Since St. Louis, it's been Baltimore, Boston, and now California. One double. He finally kicked it around to Burton off with two. And now Harry Smith has got to pay attention because his young opponent just might be on his way. That makes it 21 pins. The hunch we'll see Harry jumping around a bit. He gets geared up like that. There we are. Well, maybe Harry feels he's got to let his opponent get the jump on him, and then he begins to turn it on. Harry has a way of uh, letting you know that he's around. Even if he happens to be uh, 10, 15, 20 pins down, he puts on his tigerish act. And uh, actually, it's not an act. That's just the way he performs. We're in the third frame. Here's another chance for a double. Smith is in that hole, and there could be the big break. Smith's first double at 4-9 was up there, but something came from the rear and took out both the 4 and 9. They looked like a couple of soldiers toppling over there in midair, Bill. That was a funny bit of pin action. Delayed action, certainly, and uh, a welcome action for Harry Smith. Yeah, that might break him loose. Burton has other thoughts. He wants to keep the string going. It's two. It moves. It's there. He carries. That's three. And the young fellow running one out. We don't see him do that too often. No, you don't. He shows very little emotion, but that ball is so live. A pin came off the sideboard and just, I don't know, swept off uh, three or four others. Five strikes in a row in any one game starts a $250 bonus. $50 additional for each additional strike. Both these boys, thinking of the win, the win worth a minimum of $5,000. Two high breaks up the four, seven, ten, nothing but the four pin. Ooh, the tempo's picking up. I can uh, sense it here, and it seems like the audience feels it. Uh, Fred, uh, they will see uh, quite a few strikes here. with a spare in the fourth. In his two appearances, Burton picked up bonus money only once in the third game of his big series when he shot 243. Shot 243 with a wide open split in the 10th frame, but finished with 694. Smith has been to the bonus window four times. Ten pin. Can't get loose. No, he came back shaking his head that uh, he wasn't too pleased with that ball. Naturally, if he had carried, he would have been extremely pleased, but these bowlers work on their timing, they work on their delivery, release point. They want to be completely satisfied with their game. Right in the middle. Smith taking no chances with that one. So at the end of four, Burton is 79 spare. Smith is 69 spare. The margin is 21 pins. In his two appearances, Harry Smith has already won $3,200. Burton has won $2,250. Both boys won both of their matches. Harry picking up $1,200 in bonus money. Just like that. So that 10 pin hurt Harry. Could be four. He's 89 with a big strike. Here's Nelson Burton Jr. in slow motion. Halfway, Burton is 99, strike, 
Mike Smith is 89 strike. Sixth frame, second game, championship bowling's World Series from Akron, Ohio at the Firestone Bowlerama. Nelson Burton Jr. on a strike. A solid 10, and that's life for Harry Smith. Boy, that was in there. Boy, these two boys are at it uh, tooth and nail. They're giving it uh, their all. You could see it in uh, the way they let the ball go. A lot of oomph on the ball. Boy, that was solid. The cupboard to spare. And Smith now in position to get back where he was at the end of the first game. He lost the first game by 11 pins. Burton started this one with three strikes. Harry picked up a double, then a 10 pin. Now he's back on a strike. He left a 10 pin here in the fourth. He'll want to be tight. Oh, he couldn't be any tighter than that. Back to 11 pins. Multiple sclerosis causes more chronic disability among young adults than any other disease of the central nervous system. So contribute generously to your nearest MS chapter. Fred Wolf, along with Bill Bonetta in Akron, Ohio, we're in the seventh on two, eight, ten, up, jump the devil. Well, I don't know what happened there, Fred. Uh, I watched that ball pretty closely and looked like the uh, line was good. Evidently, it lacked that uh, one revolution, we call it, necessary to get strikes. A little disappointing for Harry Smith. Well, Harry gave it a try, practically throwing it overhand to get some action there at the back end, but it didn't happen. So Smith now is open in the seventh with 145. Burton comes in in the seventh, working on a spare. Playing it a little safe, Bill. Well, he had a slight tendency to uh, pull uh, shots on 24, so perhaps he's uh, establishing a little bit different pattern. Here's a tough shot, the two and the eight. Nelly to the left side of the approach. He'll send it out and bring it back. Nice cover. So at the end of seven, Burton is 137 with a spare. Smith is open in the seventh with 145. Well, let's see what uh, Nelly does on lane number uh, 23. Harry Smith uh, had an 810 there, and he indicated through our own type of sign language that he lofted the ball too much. Too high. Nelly breaks it up, 610. So that's 155. Burton with a lead of 10 pins here in the second game. He won the first game by 21 pins. A big match. The winner guaranteed at least $5,000, which would be the loser's share in the finals. The winner, of course, with a big chance to win 10,000 additional. The cover. The loser of this match and the loser of next week's match, Dick Weber against Billy Hardwick, the two losing totals will decide third and fourth. Third place, $1,500. Fourth place, $1,000. Big turn. Harry doesn't get there. And Harry has the 2-4-5 with the 7, and that 7-pin makes it doubly tough. Well, at least doubly tough. Uh, this is a very tough combination now. And, and that's uh, why. There's the seven pin. He covered the two five a little high, left the seven. So Smith now with two open frames in succession. That puts Burton about 30 pins out in front. One game to go. Two frames here remaining in the second game.
wondering again, Fred, would he have rolled that ball had he carried that uh, strike on 23 instead of 8 10? There, we got the 7 10 out of there that time. So Smith, with two doubles in this game, looked like he was going to go, and an 8 10 stopped him. Burton started with three, spare in the fourth. He had one in the fifth, and he's followed with three straight spares. We're in the ninth. The reach. In and he carries, and he's got that big strike in the ninth and a chance to pull out a 230. That ball came off his hand uh, very freely. But I've noticed on uh, 23, Fred, I'm sure you have, that uh, he doesn't seem to be able to get out of that ball as cleanly as uh, he'd like to. The four pin falling this way and what a kick for the youngster from St. Louis Nelson Burton with that big double still looking at 235 no bonus money again this game Burton can finish with four Smith can finish with four same hit as a matter of fact uh, I, I felt that was even a better ball than the uh, other one that's what we call a quick eight Sometimes in the 4-7 lead, the ball feels so good, it must be hooking just a little bit more than is uh, visible to us from uh, this distance. The cover for 223. Merton in the first game, 206. 223, 429. So the youngster who averaged 221 for his first six games. 13 pins under his average for the first two games, but enough to give him a lead because if Smith goes all the way for 214, he still will have a 20 pin lead. Smith has got to have this one. In fact, he needs a couple badly to keep him in. There's the first one. Harry, unable to get a double in the first game, now has three doubles here in the second game. Getting on the beam for the big final here, the World Series of Championship Bowling in Akron, Ohio. Harry Smith going against Nelson Burton Jr. These were the two top scorers in their two matches to qualify for the semifinals. Next week, it'll be Dick Weber against Billy Hardwick. The winner of this week's match and the winner of next week's match will meet in the finals over the last two weeks. Hurry up, a six-pin count, 210. Four pins that Harry Smith may be looking for when the third game is completed. So at the end of two for Burton, it's 429 for Smith, 405. The big one is coming on Championship Bowling's World Series in Akron, Ohio, where the World Series of Golf is played annually. It'll be Bo Burton, the youngster from St. Louis, starting the third game. All games starting on the left. Bo will bowl one frame. Harry Smith will move from right to left. The competition continuing through the 10 frames. A 24-pin lead. The first strike. Burton trying to protect 24 pins. It'll be worth a minimum of $5,000 to the youngster. And a chance, of course, at 10. The winner here meeting the winner of the Dick Weber-Billy Hardwick match next week. Started to say, Fred, what a pile driver that was. The ball had everything. Big turn. Oh, there's the old accordion ball. And Harry might just be getting ready for one of those long strings. Neither boy is cashed in the bonus department. And Smith, in his first two appearances, went to that bonus window four times for a total of $1,200. Burton cashed once for $250. 
We're in the second. For the double. There it is. So that puts the youngster now on the spot. He needs this one to keep that 24 pins. Boy, this one's liable to go right to the wire, Bill. Yes, it is. Harry Smith has his ball rolling now. He's got uh, good control. Uh, Nelson Burton Jr. rolling the ball a little bit better than he did the uh, first two games, actually. Here it comes. He matches it. Boy, there's a sign of a great champion when you need that big strike. And to just put it in that 1-3 pocket. Burton moves left. They're both on two. The margin is still 24 pins. Eight frames to go. Too high the four pin, and there's room for Smith. On the 1965 PBA Winter Tour, the boys knew that this young fellow was making every event. He won over $15,000 on the Winter Tour alone. Averaged 213 per game, second to Dick Weber, who averaged 214. Very interesting, Bill. Should uh, Burton be the winner and Weber be the winner next week to have these two boys meet in the finals? Because Nellie will tell you that Weber has been his idol for a good many years. Well, he certainly picked a wonderful uh, idol. Smith for three. It's there. And goodbye, Harry. Boy, that's what you call running him out. Well, we watched this fellow in action against Don Carter a few weeks back when Carter started his first game with two spares, went all the way for ten in a row, then started this next game with four, 14 in a row, but Harry just kept grinding him out and finally was the winner 7 to 675. He's got to come from behind again. On three. Throws it up. Doesn't get there. Leaves the two and the five. And Smith has looked at this one four or five times. He's had it with the four. And he's had it with the four and the seven. That's five times, Sam Baca informs us, our statistician. This is always a dangerous uh combination to leave. Nice cover. Gives him 78 spare. Burton is 49 with a spare in the third as he moves in in the fourth. The margin, 15 pins. Two high and the three six. Well, his trouble seems to be on uh, 24. Uh, all his bad shots are uh, high. Sometimes the boys will alternate, get a high shot and then a low. He's sticking with some kind of a pattern. Burton is high, and Harry has been constantly short, light. Difference nice in the angle. Cover. <laughs> well, at the end of four for Smith, it's 78 spare. For Burton, it is 67 spare. Smith has picked up. 11 pins, the margin now 13 pins. There are six frames to go. Take your pick. Hurry. That's the old shaker. So Burton now in position with a strike in the fifth. Smith will try to match it. Boy, these two boys are fighting it out again, frame for frame. There we go. He's there. We're halfway. In the third and final championship bowling's World Series, Burton is 87 strike. Smith is 98 strike. One break. Either way. Could be worth $10,000. The bad break could cost someone 10. The good break will be good for 10. And Smith does not get his double. He leaves the 6-10. First time we've looked at this. Well, he left the 2-5 uh, in the last time in 23. So again, whether intentionally or not, we've watched many, many shows and I've seen the tendency to uh, 
Overcorrect. Nice cover. Oh, Harry does a great job on these spares. He just covers them, hitting both pins with the ball. And now the youngster knows what this strike will mean to him. We're in the sixth. that. So Burton, who had to follow Smith's first two, comes right back. He got that big strike in the second frame. Here was about the same spot, only this time it meant 10 to his advantage because the margin now back up to more than 20 pins. Careful. He got the kick of his life right there. That's three in a row. And Nelson Burton, Jr., on the verge of becoming a finalist on Championship Bowling's World Series. Harry Smith is the only man that can prevent that. He has four frames to do it. He is too high, and there's the four, six, and Nelson Burton Jr. now has one foot in the door. He certainly has, and uh, he did mostly himself. You'll remember that strike uh, he just had on 23 where he tripped the four pin, which, uh, w whether Harry fell or not, must have influenced his shot on 24. Harry takes one. For Smith, it's now 145 in the seventh. He is open. Burton is on three. Again, the three six ten. Here's something for some of you young housewives that watch championship bowling. I wonder, do you take a bowling break in the afternoon, possibly one afternoon a week? There's nothing like it to relieve the boredom, put a little sparkle into your everyday routine. Friendly competition, great exercise, lots of fun something to talk to dad about when he comes home. Bowling is great fun. It makes you feel like you'd like to. The eighth frame for Nelson Burton Jr. from St. Louis. This strike would just about put the finishing touches on this match. Yes, this is what we call a hammer. If he gets this one, it's uh, all but over. Nice delivery. Then shakes it up, leaves the five. Well, I believe Nelly uh, played that a little on the safe side, Bill. He knows the three spares here in the last three frames will be just about all he needs. Well, he's in a very good position now. Even some of his balls are a little bit off. Uh, he gets nine pins on him. Okay. There's the cover. So Burton now, 166 spare against Smith, 145 spare. Burton out in front by 21 pins. He had a lead of 24, so the margin is 45 pins. And that's not a bad position to be in. Looks like he needs one mark, though. That's all. We're right here, and it's all over. He knows that. And he knows it well. This youngster hasn't been bowling as long as he has not to know the score. I'm sure he knew that was it. That fill worth at least $5,000 more in addition to what he's won up to now. Smith with a strike on the ninth. These two fellas who did so well in their first two appearances Neither will cash with bonus money. We just couldn't keep those strings going. And there's still room for each man to get four more strikes and still neither boy getting five in a row. Oh, they come loose now. I'm sure Harry will admit that uh, those two balls are what we call free-willing balls. That's, uh, sometimes this happens even to the greatest you work hard and you can't do exactly what you want, and then when it's all over, you let up a little bit and the ball works like a charm. Well, these are important strikes for Harry. It may be the difference between third and fourth. 
225 here with this one. There it is. This will give Harry 630. Burton, of course, doesn't have to worry about total pins. He has enough pins to win his match. And he has now qualified for the finals of the World Series of Championship Bowling and will meet the winner of the Dick Weber Billy Hardwick match next week from the Firestone Bowlerama here in Akron, Ohio. All the way, 2 2 5. Four in a row. Harry, who started this game with three and finished it with four, as Nellie B. A chance for 246 and 675. In fact, he needs two to keep his average, 221. Beautiful. How easy can you throw it, Bill? Well, Harry Smith had eight strikes that game, and uh, both can get uh, nine, so that'd be a total of 17 between them. That's quite a finish. In case you missed championship bowling last week, Smith and Burton were the two top scorers. Buzz Fazio was third with 13.03, followed by Tommy Tuttle, Mike Lemongello, Ed Bourdais, Ray Bluth, Dave Sutar, Fred Lenning, George Howard, Don Carter, and Jimmy St. John. Burton with nine, the count and cover, two, three, five. The total, 664. His average, 221. So, Bill, before he throws this ball, he has his average, and now he's one pin over. A beautiful performance by a young fella that you're going to hear so much of in the years to come. Great performance. Beautiful so performance. to both of these boys. And, of course, for the presentations to wind this one up here in Akron, Ohio. Just repeating, don't forget next week, Dick Weber against Billy Hardwick. Now, before the presentation, Fred Wolf along with Bill Bonetta in Akron, Ohio, the home of Firestone. Here are the final results of the first match in Championship Bowling's World Series. For Harry Smith, 195, 210, and 225, the total 630. For Nelson Burton Jr., 206, 223, and 235, the total is 664. A very thrilling match, ladies and gentlemen. Do you agree with that? Harry, uh, when we look at these statistic, uh, statistics up there, we notice that both of you improved as you went. Uh, each game is a little higher, but you, with your three open frames, uh, that's about the story, 34 pins. That's right, Freddie. Every time I had a chance to take an opportunity, uh, I didn't have it. Nelly uh, bowled well, and I, I want to wish him a lot of luck on the show. He's a newcomer, and I think he's going to be here for a long time. Good well, luck, Nelly. I, I noticed, too, Harry, that you outstruck the young fellow, but uh, you didn't get him in the right place. You had 19 strikes, and Nelly had 18. Yeah, he beat me 34 pins, so that's what counts. He did, you did not have an open frame, Nelly? No, Freddie, I think the breaks were early in the match. Uh, Harry hit the pocket every ball, left a few tens, and uh, I was a little shaky and crossed over the Brooklyn and still got nine pins out of it. That's, uh, that's the early breaks, keeps you loose. Well, that means we'll see you in two weeks, Nelly, so stay in shape. You'll All meet right. the winner of the match next week scheduled here on the World Series of championship bowling in Akron, Ohio. It'll be Dick Weber against uh, Billy Hardwick. you have any choice there, the two, Nelly? Well, they're both tough. Uh, whichever one's hitting the best, I'll be bowling, so. All right, we'll have you back here in two weeks. All right. So take good care of yourself. Harry, see that nothing happens to him, will you? I'd like to thank championship bowling for inviting me on the show, Freddie. Very good, Harry. Hope to see you again next year. Thank Ladies you, and gentlemen, Harry Smith, Nelson Burton, Jr. You can join us here again next week at the Firestone Bowlerama in Akron, Ohio, as the World Series of Championship Bowling continues. Next week, it'll be Dick Weber and Billy Hardwick, who just happened to be standing off in the wings. And let's bring them on, ladies and gentlemen. Richard, how are you? Thank you, and Billy. Well, you folks had a good look at uh, Nelson Burton, Jr. That means that one of you two gentlemen will meet him in the finals. Well, this is true, Fred. Uh, of course, we've seen this boy on the PBA Tour quite a bit, and... Uh, He's uh, quite impressive, so uh, one of us is going to have to be on our heels, uh, whoever bulls him. 
Well, how about uh, how about next week? You're going to spend the week here in Akron and get in shape? Now, this pair of lanes here, of course, you two boys had it out once before in the Firestone Open of 1965 when Billy here did such a great job, and you finished second, Dick. Well, that's right, Fred, and, uh, of course, I'm going to have to lay on the lanes uh, all this week. Really? Well, if you'll give me room, I'll work with them. If he'll give you room, I think there'll be room. I want to wish both you boys a lot of luck next week. Thank you very much, And Fred. look out for Nellie Burton Thank in the you. final. Thank you. Okay. There they are. <laughs> boys, sure hope you can be with us over the next three weeks. As we mentioned, it'll be Dick Weber against Billy Hardwick. The winner will meet Nelson Burton Jr. in the finals over the last two weeks. So speaking for Bill Bonetta and myself, this is Fred Wolf. I want you to keep them bowling out there. It's great fun. Believe me, because bowling makes you feel like you'd like to. Championship Bowling by King Louie. by the American Bowling Congress, and we wish to thank AMF for their cooperation in helping us produce championship bowling. <laughs>